Hello, welcome again to my YouTube channel, and today I'll be talking about the one thing that seems to be on everybody's minds, the big buzz of the IT world right now, and that is artificial intelligence. Yes, that is what everybody seems to be talking about. It seems that once ChatGPT took off, that there's all these other applications, there's AI to help you improve your writing, there's AI digital assistants, things that can summarize your emails, all kinds of crazy tools using large language models. And I work with various customers, and some of them do care about how are we using these types of technologies in cybersecurity, how can they use this technology to improve their cybersecurity, but a lot of them really are wondering about their users that are using these technologies and they want to make sure that their users are using them responsibly, that they're following the corporate policies that they have in place for the use of artificial intelligence. And they also want to make sure that these users are not just willy-nilly sending all kind of data that they should not be to these artificial intelligence applications. So I'm going to demonstrate how, at least using the Palo Alto firewall, you can control some of that. Specifically, I will show how you can use Palo Alto Network's application ID and URL filtering. Palo Alto does have app IDs just for artificial intelligence and does a good job of making sure that all of those app IDs are kept into an application group that you can build and you can keep up to date without having to go in and manually add them. Palo Alto Networks will automatically add those tags to make sure that all the application IDs related to artificial intelligence are there. And same thing with URLs. For example, have you heard of Hugging Face? I had never heard of it, but apparently that's yet another chatbot similar to ChatGPT. It's something that when these types of applications appear out of nowhere, they will automatically be added to the application ID, to the URL category, so that whatever policies you have in place will be enforced across all of these new artificial intelligence applications as they come out. So this will be the shorter video. I'm just going to show you the workflow and how it works. I'll show you the log in the firewall. There will be another video, which will be the long form version in which you'll see the entire configuration built out in the Palo Alto firewall. So let's get started. Let's imagine that you're a user and you want to use ChatGPT. So you're going to navigate to chat.openai.com. And the user will see something like this. This is a page that allows you to force the user to review your company policy, saying that the website they're trying to visit is allowed, but it could present risks. Uh, this is just an example. And then you can put a list of sanctioned applications here. As you can see, this is just a fake link. And then your user is able to continue to still proceed to the application, but this allows you to force them to actually review their policy before proceeding. As you know, we all take tons of security training and we do it every year, but we often forget, and sometimes we may not. Uh, we may need a reminder of the uh, policies, especially when visiting applications. The Palo Alto Networks firewall allows you to add something like this. This would not be for all applications. I've set this up that this is just for the artificial intelligence category. And again, this category is dynamically updated. So as new artificial intelligence applications are created, they will be automatically added to this category so that Palo Alto maintains that for you rather than you having to add those manually. Then the user could click continue and now they have access to the application. And of course they can type in normal things such as why are the Jacksonville Jaguars wow. the greatest football team in the NFL? We do know that ChatGPT does hallucinate, so it's saying things like that the New England Patriots might be the greatest team. That's obviously incorrect. So there's still some, some kinks to be worked out with the AI. So now let's imagine that the user wants to pivot from football and instead start to do some business related things. And the user wants ChatGPT to generate some information based on some reports or something. And the user is going to put in some company data that they're not supposed to. To test this, we can go to this website, DLP test, which has sample data. We can copy all this sample data. This is just sample names, social security numbers and credit card numbers. I will copy this and then paste it into ChatGPT, press enter, and you'll see that there's actually something went wrong while generating the response. Now if I go to my firewall, and in the monitor tab under data filtering, I'll refresh, 
And you can see here that there is a log showing that to open AI ChatGPT right now, someone tried to send private information. And you can see here that the action was reset server. So the firewall actually reset that connection and did not forward on that data to the chat bot. You can also forward these logs to a tool that your security team might be using for monitoring so that they can take some kind of action. They can contact the manager or if you're using a security orchestration automation response tool, that tool is able to email that person's manager automatically or force that person to take some kind of training. Various actions that you can take depending on the policy of your organization. Let me show you the same workflow in Hugging Face. I will go to the Hugging Face chat. As you can see, it takes me there automatically. The firewall by default is set to have a URL filtering timeout of 15 minutes. So as the user goes to other artificial intelligence applications, because they've already gone through the prompt and hit continue, they're able to access other artificial intelligence applications for 15 minutes before seeing again that page, which requires them to read the company policy or whatever else you put on that page. You can of course customize that. So if you want them to see it more or less often, then you can customize that in the firewall firewall and I will show that in the longer video if you would like to watch it. Again, I can ask it a great question such as why is Trevor Lawrence the greatest quarterback of all time? And again, it provides some sort of hallucination inf information about why Trevor Lawrence is not the greatest quarterback of all time. Ooh. But if I try to send this data. Stop generating. We'll again get another error. And when I go into the firewall, I see here hugging face. And again, it's trying to send private info to the hugging face application. And the action was again reset server. A network firewall, of course, is not enough to solve all of your issues with artificial intelligence applications. It's really important to have a good policy and to constantly educate your users on that policy. The workflow I showed today will help with that because when users try to access artificial intelligence applications, they will be reminded of their responsibilities and of your corporate policy before actually accessing that application, they will have to acknowledge it before they can proceed. Then if they do send private information, that will be detected and blocked, and then the security team can take appropriate action, whether that's ensuring that the user reaffirms their commitment to those requirements and their understanding of what they are supposed to do and their responsibilities, or contacting that person's manager and taking some more serious disciplinary action, especially if it's a repeat offense. Of course, the network firewall could just block access to these applications, However, many of the customers I've talked to do not want to do that because they know that then that user is going to be encouraged to take that data offline to a personal device and just use the application elsewhere. And they do not want to encourage that. Instead, they just want to put controls in place to make sure that users are following the policy and protecting that company's critical information. Hopefully this was useful in showing how that worked. I will post a longer video, which will actually show the entire configuration of the firewall which I put in place for this demonstration. So thanks again for listening in and let's all stay secure.